Today, I will discuss the hardware of TPS resuscitator and how to set maximum PIP, patient PIP, patient PWP before any neonatal resuscitation or transport ventilation. Let's start. What is the basic difference between TPS resuscitator and AMBU? In AMBU or self-inflating bag, we cannot provide PWP, only we can provide PIP and that is also variable in every breath and depends on the operator. But in TPS resuscitator, we can provide preset PIP and PWP both in every breath, so less injury to the airway. In TPS resuscitator and AMBU, both have no compressor and blender to set the FIO2, so we need them separately. This is the image showing Neobuff TPS resuscitator, blender and a flow meter. This black color tubing is air compressor tubing. This white color tubing is oxygen compressor tubing. They are connected to a box with a knob. This is the blender. Blender makes the compressed air and oxygen and produce the required amount of FiO2 which we adjust by rotating this knob beforehand. Oxygen coming from the blender goes through this flow meter to oxygen tubing. We usually set the flow at 8 liter per minute in the flow meter. Oxygen goes through the oxygen tubing into the TPS resuscitator via the gas inlet. Then oxygen from the TPS resuscitator via the gas outlet goes to the TPS circuit and then to the patient. This is the PIP control knob. This is the maximum pressure release valve. This is the gas inlet. This is the gas outlet. And this is the pressure dial showing the circuit pressure. This is the TPS resuscitator with TPS circuit. This is the proximal part of the TP circuit and this is the distal part of the TP circuit. This is the image of TP which has three part. This is the gas outlet tubing. This is the adjustable peep cap with central opening. This is the patient interface port which is usually connected to either baby max or endotracheal tube. Now we will learn in the TP resuscitator how to set the maximum PIP patient PIP and patient PWP. To set the maximum PIP, we have to follow three simple steps. Step 1, we have to occlude the TP circuit by occluding the peep cap and the marks by either this method or by this method. Step 2, we have to rotate the PIP control knob maximally in clockwise direction. Step 3, we have to adjust the maximum PIP by rotating the pressure release knob and which will be shown here. After setting the maximum PIP, now we have to set the patient PIP. To set the patient PIP, we have to follow two simple steps. Step 1 is same, that is we have to occlude the circuit by occluding the peep cap and the baby max. And step 2 is we have to rotate the PIP control knob in anti-clockwise direction to adjust the desired PIP. And we do not touch this knob. We usually adjust the patient PIP at 15 cm of H2 or between the 15 to 20 cm of H2. After setting the maximum PIP and patient PIP, we have to now set the patient PWP. To set the patient PWP, First, we have to occlude the baby max again, but we will not occlude the peep cap. Then we will adjust the desired peep by rotating this peep cap, but we do not touch this knob or this knob. We usually adjust the PEP pressure at around 5 cm of H2. When we will adjust any pressure, every time it will be shown in this dial. After attaching the patient interface to the baby, that is baby max or ET tube, we have to intermittently occlude the peep cap only at the rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute. Just like we are giving breath to the baby. When we will occlude the peep cap, PIP pressure will be generated within the circuit and when we will release the peep cap, PWP pressure will be generated within the circuit. We can use the TPS resuscitator in delivery room for neonatal resuscitation or as transport ventilation during transport the baby from delivery room to the NICU.